And good morning once again, everyone. Welcome back to the Dead Linger Road to the Apocalypse, where we take a look at the roadmap, see where we're going and where we've been and where we currently are. We are somewhere down here in the world. We've talked about zones. We've talked about building variety, props and general world objects, ponds, lakes, and rivers. We've talked about random encounters. And now let's wrap out the week when we're going to talk about the day-night cycle and skybox simulations and a little bit about foliage. It matters. Let's talk about it. Okay, so the day-night cycle and the uh, skybox in the Dead Linger is currently in early development. Currently, there are temporary time-of-day skyboxes that fade throughout the day, and the day-night cycle progresses continually as you survive. We have future plans to improve the look of the sky, add cloud formations, weather systems, calendar seasons, and a few other bonus events that only happen during certain times of day or certain times of the month. So let's talk about what they currently have. They recently released a new updated sky system that they're using. I don't know what it's called. Uh, but it has in it already some very subtle cloud formations, very smooth and kind of whispery, wisp, wispy, wispy, wispy. So they're wisp, wispy, wispy, wee. <laughs> they're not too. My son's like, you're not too. So yeah, they're very wispy and light. Now he's saying they're whispery. All right, so they're wispy. So the clouds and stuff like that, the sky does look really pretty. It will be nice to see more clouds that come drifting across the sky in, ad in addition to what they kind of have. It looks like they're just kind of baked into the background because they don't, they just seem very static and far away. So it'd be nice to see if we get clouds that actually kind of come through the sky and block out the sun and make shadows in addition to what we currently have. So nice things come in there. Now with that, I don't think I've seen it rain since the new sky has come in and I know they said that um, you know some of the features had to come out to make the new one up and running so it's possible we won't see a lot of weathering effects until later down the road the other thing that I've noticed about the new day night cycle is it does appear that the day night cycle is shorter like it's um, the daytime just seems so much shorter and I'm not the only one that's mentioned that. And on the forum, when someone mentioned that, I think it was Jeff Keen that came in and said that there was no change in that part. Like, no one actually went in and said, hey, shorten the time. But what it could be is that the way that the new sky system generates its lights and things of that nature, it might appear to be getting darker sooner. So the cycle may not have changed but the lighting could be different from what we're used to seeing. So it gives the appearance that the day is shorter. Um, but what they, they said they would look at that as well and then make tweaks if they need to. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Let's see the picture they had as their, uh, this is from, I believe, one of the earlier builds. Yeah, and if this sky here is kind of indicative of what it was before, yeah, pretty bland, they had a sun, but the new sky system does look really, really nice. I think this is probably from the Ogre build before they were on Unity, so that might make a difference to the way the sky was generated as well. But it definitely does look nice. Uh, so the cloud formations will be great to see. Weather systems. Now that's something that I've been curious about. Currently, I don't know how time advances in the game. Like I know when I'm in the game actively playing, I go through day-night cycles, but there's really nothing that kind of indicates to me the passage of time like is it really tracking days and why I think that would be cool to know is because at that point then it might be worth tracking like winter and fall and spring and summer and I think that would really add to the realism of the game the simulation aspect because you know in the winter time we would see snow and you definitely would want to make sure you've got clothing and warm clothing. Um, if it's in the summer, then you have to worry about heat and overheating and exhaustion and drinking. Uh, so the the current stuff here, they said they're at like 30%. Um, but I, I can see that there's still a lot of room for improvement as far as how the game handles 
the weather. And, you know, normally in a game you don't think about it too much. Like, because, like, I'm watching my son play some, um, what is Modern Warfare 3, I think, some Call of Duty stuff. Modern oh, Modern Warfare 2. And so, in a game like that, you're not worried about raining and snowing because, you know, these are short matches. But when you start moving into a game where it's trying to track days and months potentially, you want to be able to see it go through the cycles of the year to really feel like you're in that world. So I'm hoping those kinds of things come in time. And then it says here a few other bonus events that only happen during certain times of day. Oh, yeah. So just as I say that, he pops in and, and he's on a snow map. But the thing is, though, you know, that's that's limited to one specific map. You know, it's not like if he sits there forever, it will eventually cycle through day and night and then go from snow to something else. That's what I want to see in the Dead Linger is if I just stay there and then the time will cycle through and I can watch over time go from fall to spring and all that stuff. Um, but it says here, a few other bonus events that only happen during certain times of day. Not quite sure what that will mean in the context of the game as it stands now, but like if they start talking about adding in NPCs and things like that, like in Project Zomboid, I don't think they're triggered by time of day, but you do get random sounds like gunshots and stuff like that. And I think that that might be something that happens. You know, it's just, I'm just trying to think like what events they would have trigger. Maybe Halloween brings extra zombies kind of a thing um, maybe if it's a really bad thunderstorm that might trigger a helicopter to crash I know we talked about this earlier about like content generation and, and NPCs and stuff but wouldn't that be kind of cool if that's what triggers the events is things that happen based on say the weather or the time of year that's what causes these different events to happen I think that would be kind of cool Oh, my son just said it'd be a cool story idea, you know, if there's a full moon on Halloween night and then that's when, you know, more zombies, more zombies come out. And even trick or zombies. <laughs> and he wants to see trick or treater zombies, so these little kids are all rotten and stuff coming and asking for candy. <laughs> oh, let's see here. So that's where they're at. Thirty percent. Nice guy that they have now. Definitely cannot wait to see all the other stuff that they put in with the weather system and how that would trigger events in game maybe if it rains too much you'll see part of the mountain erode away and make a landslide or something hard to say flooding when they add in waters lakes and rivers maybe if you actually had it rain for long enough maybe it will flood part of the area I don't know it would be exciting to see what they throw in and I got to thinking, you know, like, wow, would they really actually take the time to simulate that or program that in, you know, potential for flooding? I think they could. I really think they could. I think that um, what they have going on currently and the way that they program things into the game engine, stuff like that I do not think would be out of the realm of possibility for them. So, oh, here comes my kid. What? Talk fast, you're stuttering. Basically, the uh, rain, mm. what if it actually, uh, it, when, we, when they add water, when the rain comes, if it's really heavy rain, it'll, like, overflow the place, but not flood it. Just like, the uh, pond would be deeper, or river would be deeper, because it's out. Oh, okay. So he said not flood, but just make it a little bit bigger, because it yeah. takes the water, and then maybe... It, as the sun comes out, it shrinks back down a little bit. And then if it's really, really heavy rain, like heavy rain with thunderstorm, mm -hmm. that would be flood. Yeah. So depending or on how much it rains it would give us how much water potentially that it grows. So or cool. All right. So let's talk about foli foliage. Is that how you spell foliage? Okay. I keep thinking it's foliage. Nope. So much for me and my public school education. So foliage. Foliage is a very early stage in the dead linger. We have future plans to increase the distance it appears, add options to change the distance, and increase the variety and appearance of all foliage throughout the world. 
let's see a screenshot that they've got here and actually right now their foliage is pretty good I think what would be cool is if they add in some uh, physics to it so like when you walk through foliage or like the uh, corn fields you can actually see the stuff part away and push down as you walk by and it springs back kind of like uh, some good examples in Age of Conan the MMO if you go and do some YouTube stuff on that when they have their foliage interaction turned on that I mean that looks pretty cool to go walking through tall grass or through big plants and bushes and stuff like that you see the stuff kinda of get pushed out of your way and then it springs back I know a lot of games do that that's just the example that came to my mind but that would be cool to see in here too um, different types as you progress throughout the year I still think it would be neat to see those crops kinda of go through a cycle of growth and then uh, when it's out of cycle they shrivel up and stuff like that I do understand there's no one there actually tending to the crops so that might not be a realistic thing to have happen but it would still be kinda cool to see and if not crops at least just tall fields of grass because even tall fields of grass kinda go through cycles of growth and then kinda getting all cruddy looking because of the you know too much sun not enough water um, but the foliage that they currently have right now actually works pretty good I think it even works better than their trees right now so I don't really know how much more they'll have to do to the bushes and the grass to make it where they want. Right now their foliage is at 40%. So I don't think we'll see too much more happen until Build 14 comes out because they say they're implementing new grass. So uh, I think it would be interesting to see what it looks like. Because with the trees, I mean, it's a drastic difference just looking at a couple screenshots it's the trees are completely different than what they have now and look so much better and a lot of people you really don't think a lot about grass sometimes because that's just something you you walk on to get from point A to point B so it'll be interesting to see how much differently the new grass and foliage will look compared to what they have now I think a lot of what they have is kinda like the stock items from the unity and then they have to add in the bits and pieces they want so I'm not quite sure what special uh, foliage they've purchased that they're gonna add into the game so we'll just have to wait and see on that um, but what they currently have is not bad of a lot of the things that they have the grass and stuff they're using right now actually looks pretty good so whatever they do change it to I'm sure we'll notice I don't know I don't know if we'll notice it as much the trees like I said it's a big difference and you notice right away that oh wow those are much better looking trees but as far as the foliage goes, bushes and grass and stuff like that, really hard to say if we'll even notice a drastic change. I'm not going to complain. I think what would be nice is maybe not so much texturally and how they look, but how it affects game performance. Because I believe when I was reading uh, the posts about the trees, they said the new trees also bring a game performance enhancement, which would make sense because in my mind a lot of times when you get a program like unity that comes with stock stuff you know that doesn't mean it's optimized for what you're doing and since they're using unity and putting a lot of custom programming behind it um, it's quite possible that the stock trees just aren't efficiently rendering and you know causing frame rate stuff versus say this new tree system that they're going to that makes the game that much more efficient in rendering which will help with frame rate memory usage stuttering down the road as you get uh, you know memory used up and it might be the same way with the foliage too because grass that takes a lot of computing power to really generate a whole lot of grass any one time on your screen and so if they're putting in a new custom grass system that might also help improve performance too because now it's been optimized to the engine versus just using the stock stuff that may not be optimized for the coding that they're doing so not only will it make things look pretty but I think will help things run better as well so that's what we've got for day and night and foliage alright so just some thoughts there if you have thoughts opinions on day night cycles weather grass and things like that Go ahead, leave it in the comments. It's always nice to see some little discussions going on about game features and what we think. And uh, that will do it for this week. Uh, come back Monday. 
I'll try to get some more roadmaps put up. Work's been kind of kind of busy, so I haven't posted as much as I would like. Uh, but I hope to get some more stuff put up for the weekend, as, or at least maybe recorded for the weekend so I can post it ahead for the week. So good hearing from everybody, and we will talk to you later. Bye.